Good morning. Good morning. This is exciting. This is a new thing for us. So I really want to thank you all for coming. It's great to spend some time with, uh, with our great users, our partners, our friends from the industry. Really great. Are you all ready for Zerdocon? Yeah. Let's get started. First, before we start, I would like to give a special thank you to some of our uh, sponsors. Without you, we couldn't have done this event, so really appreciate that. Special thank you to our platinum sponsors. This would be Microsoft and Amazon. And, as, and an additional special thank you for our lab sponsors, Island and ONX. These guys have done great things, and you can play in the hands-on labs and really see both stuff running in their cloud and on Amazon and on Microsoft, all in the lab. So thank you very much for our sponsors. But even more, sorry. Even more important, this is you. Thank you for all our partners and our customers. And these are the people that came here to this event, actually a subset of the people that came. And really appreciate you coming here is a great vote of confidence in what we're doing in Zerto. In, so we, are, we appreciate that. But really, what we re appreciate is your vote of confidence in joining us for this journey, in this journey of building this world of uninterrupted technology. We've had an amazing year here at Zerto. We've almost doubled in the number of customers. We grew our headcount by 60% in the, just in the last year. And it's great, continuing the growth. And obviously, as you can imagine from this conference, we are not planning to stop there. So that leads us to a great question, right? I mean, we've shown a lot of these logos. And obviously, we've got a lot of logos that are not, were not able to join us here. but. Who are the customers? Who is the Zerto customer? So the very short answer is anyone can be a Zerto customer. Right? If your IT is important to you, if your applications are important to you, then you should be a Zerto customer. That's why we have customers in 70 different countries. It goes everywhere in the Americas, the US, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, in Europe, Obviously, the UK and Germany and France and Italy, Spain, all of Eastern Europe, APAC, we have Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Japanese customers, Chinese customers. We even have a Philippine partner that I met here in this show. So really, this is not something that is limited to any specific geography. So maybe we should ask you customers, which sector are you from? Answer is everywhere. If your applications are important to you, is that specific to a, a specific industry? Probably not. Is that something that only certain industries care? Do you not care about your applications? It's probably not. So we're seeing them from obviously a lot of financial services, a lot of insurance, healthcare is growing very, very quickly, technology companies, media, legal, Go uh, government, we're seeing more and more. Retail, there are a lot of customers. And really, this continues to grow. And we're now at just past the 5,000 customers mark. So we are really starting to spread the Zerto word everywhere. And a lot of that is with the help of you guys. Because you tell your other customers a recommendation by one of you is stronger than anything that I can say. right? Because they believe you will not recommend a product that you do not like. So again, really appreciate this vote of uh, confidence. And last but not least, when we look at the customers, they vary. They vary a lot in size. So we have a lot of small customers. We have a lot of smaller IT shops. Uh, I use the example Stonegate Farmers. That's an agriculture company in the UK. And they can be our customers. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we've got some of the world's largest corporation. We actually have three of our Fortune 10 customers sitting here in this room. So it's great. We have a lot of customers. Why is that important? Let's ask ourselves, why, why is that? Why, why am I telling you that? Because having a lot of customers gives us a great opportunity. It lets us listen. 
And this is something we pride ourselves, and some of our very early customers know that this has not changed. And I give you my sorry, I give you my word, this is not going to change. We are going to listen to our customers. And the important thing is not just listening, what do you want now? But this is really talking to you, what are you trying to achieve? So what are you trying to achieve? So we've asked a lot of customers, one thing that will not come surprising to you that we hear a lot is cloud. We heard that from everyone, or I would say almost everyone. But they want to go to the cloud. They want to do something with the cloud. But now, is that, does that mean that they know, that you know what you want there, that you know where this journey is going? Almost unanimous, the answer is no. This is a complicated journey. You have your private clouds that you're building on-premise. You have your public clouds, uh, Amazon, Google, uh, Microsoft. You have your managed clouds. We have 350 of these managed clouds in our network. A lot of them are here in the, as sponsors and as visitors. And this is growing very quickly. And guess what? No one wants a one-size-fits-all. Are your applications all the same? Do you, can you do something with a one-size-fits-all? Likely not. Most likely not. So this brings a multiple cloud strategy, hybrid cloud. Everyone needs something. It just gets more and more confusing. And what's more, it's changing all the time. So I would say that almost 100% of our customers are telling us we are building a cloud strategy. Most of them are still trying to figure out what this cloud strategy means, what it means to you. So now let's talk about something else that we're hearing from our customers, what they are trying to achieve. And given that we're zero, and that's an important topic of our conversation, shouldn't be a big surprise that business continuity is something that comes up. But now business continuity is not new. That is not something new. But what are we hearing? We are hearing that business continuity has to, to evolve. It cannot stay the same. Why? Your requirements are becoming different. Your service levels that you're promising the business units are tightening. They need much tighter. You cannot say, I'll recover tomorrow. No, it has to be now. And more than that, the amount of applications that are considered critical that's growing, that's changing. It's really inflating on that. Now, this all comes from, good, from, good, uh, from a good place. We are getting more applications are important because they generate business. The SLAs are tightening because any minute is important. These are good things. But what this means is that business continuity has to evolve. And what we are really seeing that it has to evolve to is what people usually call IT resilience. Now, IT resilience, that's a big word, right? So what does it mean? Do we know what IT resilience mean? So I wasn't sure, so I actually looked it up in the dictionary. So resilience is the ability to recover from or adjust to misfortune or change. Now, that is important, or change. I think that's uh, one of the key things that are changing there, because disaster recovery business continuity, data protection, these are still critical. These are very important pieces, and they're not going anywhere. But now people are starting to understand they need the IT to be resilient, not just to bad things, but also to good changes. So what do I mean by that? Obviously, if you lose a data center, that is a change. <laughs> that is a big change. And if you don't know how to recover from that change, then you have a big problem. But this is not the only uh, change. When you roll out a new application, that is a change. When you are taking an application and moving this application to Amazon or to Azure, that is a change. When you are adopting a new cloud, that is a change. Uh, so if we want to be able to adopt to these changes, then we need IT to be resilient. IT has to be resilient if we want to evolve there. So later, we will actually have a presentation. Our next keynote here this afternoon is from General Hayden, 
and he's actually going to talk about resilience all the way from the national level, which he's very familiar to, all the way down to the corporate level. So that's going to be very interesting. But now let's talk, we've talked about cloud, we've talked about business continuity. How are they connected? And the reality is what we are seeing from our customers is that they're not talking about, we want to go to the cloud and now we need to make this resilient. It is actually the other way. We need the resiliency and cloud can be a great driver to drive resilience. Cloud can help us make the IT more resilient. It is not an initiative by itself, although sometimes it comes, uh, it comes as uh, something that you get from upper management saying, look, we need to go to cloud. But there is a reason behind that. And one of the things that cloud can really help, and by all means, not the only, not the only thing that the cloud can be helpful on, is on driving your resilience of your IT, your ability to adapt to change. So really seeing how we're seeing that this is an opportunity for, for that. And it creates a lot of requirements as well, right? Using the cloud for resilience. I mean, the cloud is very, very dynamic. When you're starting to use the cloud, change becomes your new norm. This is not the static thing. So if your IT is not resilient enough, this is going to be frustrating. This is going to cause outages. This is going to cause downtime. But if you use the cloud correctly for the resilience, this is a new opportunity. This is something that can drive resilience to a whole new level. And this is where we focus out in Zerto. And this is what we are going to focus over the next couple of days here in ZertoCon. We're going to hear that from analysts. We're going to review our product roadmap. We're going to have a lot of sessions with customers and partners discussing this thing. And why don't we start with actually a couple of these customers. So I would, I would like to use this opportunity to introduce our chief marketing officer, Gil Levonai, as well as two of our customers, Bob Lanning from Premier Healthcare and Clinton Cruz from Talbots. Please welcome them. Thank, thank you, Ziv. Uh, thank you, Bob, Clinton, for joining us here. Uh, let's start with you guys maybe introducing uh, the company you work for and your history of Zoto, Bob. Uh, Bob Lanning, uh, Premier Healthcare Alliance. We're a large healthcare group purchasing organization based out of Charlotte, North Carolina. And we use Zerto for, for some traditional reasons. Obviously, it's our main and only BCDR uh, solution. But also, as we purchase other companies, we're in a very aggressive uh, buying spree of, of companies that help give Premier an advantage in the healthcare market. And, and as we get those companies, we use Zerto to migrate their data from their local, typically smaller or mom and pop type uh, data centers into, a, a, into you know, something we put on site and then eventually to one of our data centers protected behind all of our firewalls and stuff. So it's very integral to our business from both a BCDR and from a migration strategy. So I'm Clinton Cruz. I'm the senior manager of infrastructure services at Talbots. Talbots is a large retail company. We have about 600 stores worldwide and a pretty large commerce site. So um, at Talbots, I manage the entire corporate infrastructure from operating systems to the compute to storage layers. Um, so with Zerto, we use it primarily for our business continuity, uh, resiliency, and um, application protection. So we originally purchased Zerto so that we can migrate our Talbots.com website between corporate locations so we can do hardware maintenance and network maintenance. And with Zerto, we're able to take down Talbots.com, put that an out of service page, migrate the website, and start taking orders, brand new orders from new customers in under 30 minutes. And it's a really big win for Talbots and something we've never done before. And we also use it now for our primary disaster recovery solution. We are able to, we just recently did a disaster recovery test where we took down our data analytics and our financial systems and recovered it and rebuilt it in our DR environment, including Active Directory domain, in under an hour, which is something we've never done before. So it's a real huge win and we love the product. So following on what, as you've said, we, we saw two trends in the industry. Of course, everybody's talking about cloud. Let it be a very private cloud or a more hybrid cloud or a public cloud or a managed cloud, all of the above. And we see also the trend of moving more from only a disaster recovery business community to actually looking at resilience as a whole thing in terms of also addressing the good change. M&A, 
or I want to reduce my cost by going to a public cloud or any, any other considerations of a good change that you need to address. What do you see in your companies, both from the, in terms of like the cloud strategy and the cloud the future and the move to resilience? You know, for us, it's, we have a lot of, like, a lot of companies, Cigna and those here, and, and, and us with uh, healthcare, it's, it's very private information, a lot of HIPAA data. So jumping into the public cloud has been very slow for us. And, and you know, for a long time, I said, no, 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 we'd never do it. We do have a private cloud. We replicate between our data center, a colo up in Culpeper, Virginia, and one in Charlotte at Peak 10. So we're using some of our great service providers a as our cloud, but it's still all owned and managed by us. Uh, but recent events, uh, we, we acquire, as I said, we're big in acquisitions. We bought a company in Canada. And, and so the first probably public cloud offering we have will be based on data tenancy. They won't let their data out of Canada. Obviously, we're not going to build or have a data center in Canada, so we have to put it somewhere. And you know, based on your two platinum partners, I'm assuming it's going to be in one of those places. So we're going to have to go in the public cloud for a, a small bit of our business. So that may be our, you know, the, the toe dip in. Um, and then now that we're in these service providers, uh, our CIO and, and probably a lot of companies are, are starting to question, are you really a data center company? Uh, you, you know, you're a software company, you're a retail company, you're whatever. Why are we managing a large data center? Uh, so now that we're in these facilities and working with these guys, something like Draz becomes real, real popular. So we'll, we'll definitely go probably into a hybrid model very soon. And then we may just decide let, to let our service providers handle that. Let, we don't need to do the hardware. Why do we own even hardware? And we're, we're a software company. So that's going to be a, kind of our strategy. We're going to, you know, we're private cloud fully now. We'll go into some, some hybrid. And then we'll have an initial offering out in the public with this data tenancy issue. And the whole uh, move to resilience and, and sort of. Yeah, I mean, and that gives us all this crazy flexibility. I mean, what, what would we have done without the cloud? in Canada if it wasn't there, what would we do? We'd have to put a data center, we'd have to put computers up there to try to replicate between two cities in Canada that we don't have a footprint in. And then, you know, our ability to go from Charlotte to Culpeper, even privately, that gives us all the resilience in the world, both from a disaster and a BCDR standpoint, but also from a blue grain. Maybe we want to split this stuff so we have stuff in both sites for, for that kind of resiliency. And then to be able to work with the service provider and have their local hardware to do things like, you know, larger journals and so forth. It gives, Zerto gives us crazy resiliency in, in that we have choices at any moment of where stuff is and, and, and you know, when, when we want it to be moved for, you know, whether it's a disaster or just for pure business. Great. So for Talbots, you know, being a retail company like Bob, we, we, get a, we get a lot of questions on why are we managing a data center? We're not a technology company, we're a retail company. So, you know, we explore the cloud options of being able to be have our data centers and remove the responsibility of facilities from managing ourselves. So we explore the cloud and one for several different reasons. Disaster recovery as a service is one of them. And another one is, is primarily because we're strictly a waterfall development type of company and we are exploring maybe being more agile and letting our business unit partners work with the IT development teams into a more cohesive unit. And we see the opportunity there with the cloud to be able to, to change the way we deploy applications, the way we maintain applications. And with Zerto, we're able to hopefully start exploring a more resilient type of data center out in, hopefully not really truly a public cloud, but maybe more of a hybrid type solution. Instead of having everything in-house and I'm worrying about buying new hardware, buying new more compute power, buying more storage. And with the cloud, that gives us significantly more flexibility than what we currently have. Do you guys have like a holiday season bursting and things like that? Is that Yes, so what we have is, uh, as you know, being a retail company, we have Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and, and when that, those time, like Christmas season, when that time of the year happens, everything gets put on hold. I throw more hardware at it, because last thing we want to do is go down, or last thing, you know, somebody who's making real-time decisions not be able to get the data that they need, you know, the store's short on sweaters, or we find we're selling more extensive shoes, or something like that. So having to be able to, to have more hardware on the back end on demand, it would be a big, big plus for us. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, Ziv, back to you. Click. Thank you, Gil. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Clinton. Appreciate you coming and sharing with us some of these insights. So we talked about the cloud. 
And we talked about how the cloud drives resilience. But maybe actually it's good to share some specific examples. And these are examples that we hear every day from customers that say do it. My guess is that most of you already are using or planning to use some of these use cases. So first one, let's start with the easy one, outages. Right? I mean, this is what we've built the company from. This is what we've started. This is where we started disaster recovery as a service, as something we're pushing very hard. And that makes a lot of sense because you need to protect your applications. You need to protect more and more applications. More applications are critical, and even more than that are important that you want to do. So what do you get from the cloud? If you go either to a public cloud an Amazon, an Azure, or to one of our 350 managed clouds, then you have the ability to really recover your applications without having all of this equipment. So this becomes a very effective solution, both cost effective because you don't need to buy all this equipment that will just be standing around idle while you don't have the disaster. And by the way, not just the disaster, but also when you test. We always say, if you don't test it, you should. But most of the days, you're not testing them. You're not, you don't have a disaster. Why pay for that equipment? But even more important, why maintain this equipment? How easy is it? How many people think that it's too easy to maintain your data center, that you actually want another one just to keep yourself busy? This is not what we're hearing from anyone. So really, cloud becomes a very effective solution for this. Another one, which I guarantee we've been talking about that long before the latest uh, WannaCry uh, virus that is now driving the wall, but ransomware, it becomes more and more apparent. And by the way, today it's ransomware, tomorrow it's other types of uh, viruses that will do these things. I think ransomware is even nicer because at least you can pay and, <laughs> and remove that risk. Right? I mean, sometimes these viruses, uh, like the one my wife installed on our home computer, didn't give me this option, right? I had to reinstall everything. So that was my home computer. When it's your critical business machines, it's more difficult. Now, don't get me wrong. The cloud does not solve the ransomware problem. The cloud and Zerto do not solve the ransomware problem. You need security. You need to protect. However, there are a million of these hackers, and they're looking for every day for innovative, way, innovative ways to take your weakest links in your organizations, and we all have weak links in our organization. I just gave up my home weak link on that, but, uh, but every organization have these, uh, these weak links, and they'll use them to get into your most critical assets and make these unavailable for you. So if you have the cloud and you have the ability to really keep this journal and be able to go back in time and recover just before the virus struck, that gives you something very important. So again, I'm not saying don't defend, you need to defend, but if you defend and you assume that you'll be able to defend, there is a good chance that you'll discover that something went wrong. So really seeing a lot of customers use the cloud for that. So let's talk not just about bad things, let's talk about some good things. Right, and we've heard Clinton talk about holiday season. Holiday season. So we all love holiday seasons because we get a lot of customers, right? Not exactly. I mean, a lot of customers is a very good thing. A lot of customers at the same time, especially for us in IT, can be a bad thing. Now, we never want to make customers a bad thing, right? So you don't want to, and this is important, we want to be able to have the additional capacity. We want to be able to grow. Now, however, if all these customers come and your IT is not prepared for that, they can crash the IT, and then instead of having, before that you had a few customers and they were happy, now you have a lot of customers, they are unhappy, and they go to your competitor. So obviously that's not a good thing. So how can we use the cloud? Very easily, if we know how to mobilize, to take an application and to move a few of our applications into the cloud, and when the holiday season is gone, or is done, we take them and move them back in, we have a very good solution. 
now we can actually take the customers and say a lot of customers is a good thing. Alternatively, we could have just bought, built a huge data center that will be able to support our peak hour 24 by 7 by 365. I think the cloud is a better solution for that. And then just one more example I want to share is test and dev. We all build new applications. Now, again, this is good. This brings innovation. This lets us do new things. But my guess is that if I ask each and every person here, what is the number one source for disasters? Or my new developers are something that, can, uh, that will definitely appear in the top three. My guess is that maybe even in the top one, right? How scared are you when you deploy a new application? Because you test it, you build it, you develop it, you test it, and then you figure out, OK, yeah, but I didn't take into account something that I had in my production. So now if you use the cloud, you use the cloud to protect yourself, this becomes really easy to just clone your applications in the cloud, develop and test on a copy of the data that is accurate, that is exactly the same as what you had. And when you take that, now you can be more confident that after you ran all your very thorough QA and you've tested it, now you can be at least sure that you're not getting something which is running on something different than production. So really, you made your IT more resilient. So this is important. And if I can go on and on and speak here for two days just on use cases that we have. But again, this, now, now you get into some things. And I've heard some people feel like their CIOs are saying, well, you just stick it in the cloud, and that will solve everything. That doesn't work. When you move, if you want to use the cloud to build your IT resiliency, you need to do a lot of things. There are a lot of new requirements that come from that. Right? First, you're now not running on a single monolithic stack, but you actually have different stacks. You have multiple clouds. Anything that you do has to be portable across all of your infrastructure. It has to support everything. Otherwise, it will break in some cases. Now, also, right, just putting it in the cloud doesn't guarantee that you'll have the tight SLAs that you need. If you can only recover to 12 hours ago if something bad happens, or if it takes you six hours to recover, you are not very resilient. You need this resiliency, because I, all the businesses expect that from us. They expect that from IT, that you'll have this resiliency. And to get that also, we need to make it simple. What do I mean by simple? I mean automation. Automation and orchestration. Because we do something once, then we do it again, then we do it 10 times, then we do it 1,000 times. And it always has to act the same. Otherwise, we have to reinvent the wheel every time. And we'll run into difficult, different difficulties every time. Also, it has to be exactly the same when you run it in test mode. And when you do it in production, when you actually need it. Otherwise, why did you test right, if it's not going to be the same? And also, right, I mean, when you do these things, you want to make sure you don't build these very thick protocols and start to build a runbook of 1,000 pages that maybe there is one person that you believe in your IT that knows how to, how to do that. And every new person has to spend their first three months just learning that. But you still don't believe they'll be able to to accomplish that, this is bad, right? This does not bring resiliency. This lets you check the box saying, well, if we would follow all of these things, it would work. And maybe when it actually something happens and it doesn't, and the person didn't follow all these things, and you say, well, it's your fault, you get fired, but it didn't make our IT resilient. So very important, everything has to be automated. And last but not least, this has to be robust. This has to be strong. This has to go into your most critical production assets. Your oracles, your SAPs, your exchanges, anything that you run that is critical has to be supported. Because these are the applications that matter. These are the applications that matter the most. If your, if your IT was not resilient enough for one of the small servers that one of your developers is playing on, OK. 
we can take that. But if you broke your critical assets of the company, that's bad. And that's what we want to protect against because that has an effect. So as you know, in Zerto, this is a path that we've been going on since day one. And we've been working on providing this from our on-premise private clouds, VMware infrastructures, Microsoft Hyper-V infrastructures. We've provided that on our managed clouds. Like I said, 350 of these managed clouds where you can either use them to get disaster recovery as a service to this cloud or get disaster recovery inside their cloud. We've also added the support to go into a public cloud, like an Amazon or Azure. These are the two that we support. And you can go into these uh, public clouds, but this is a one directional. So I actually want to take this opportunity to give the first product announcement of Zerdocon. And we have a release coming out in the summer. And this release will be the first one that will actually have bi-directional replication from Azure. First. <laughs> the first release will be, will be Azure. And just to be clear, we're talking about true live bi-directional replication. So all the things that we like, all the orchestration, the journal, the recovery, the point in time recovery, the file level restores, the recovery reports, all of these things are going to be available, also going, going in and going out of Azure. And very important, management, this is still going to be managed from the same simple, intuitive UI that we have today, or through, obviously, our API for the customers who want to automate these things. And this is not, not all, because if you look at the one-to-many one functionality that we introduced to our Enterprise Cloud Edition or ECE customers uh, at the end of last year, then now you can really go in and out from all this infrastructure. You can really augment your resiliency with that. You don't need to replace one of the ways that you've done. You can actually use more. You can do more. You can use a lot of these Azure credits to start that a lot of you have that. Microsoft has been pushing them pretty, pretty heavily. And customers are saying, OK, that's an opportunity to try, which, by the way, that's why they're being pushed. And now you can have your private, your managed, Azure, some targets in AWS, and build all of that into one IT. This becomes your IT. This is a real hybrid cloud. And I would go all the way and saying this is the first time that the hybrid cloud is being fully realized, that you can go in and out of all of them and use all of them. So this is really strong on our hybrid cloud vision. And one other thing that is very nice is for customers who already have an ECE, an Enterprise Cloud Edition license, they can now use Azure and going into Amazon for free, including with that license. This is included in the license. So really, all you need to do, you don't need to break your, your link. You can just say, OK, now I want to also go to Azure, and then maybe come out. This is something that's really important for us. And by the way, this is a very important partnership that we have with Microsoft. So the yeah, nice thing is that it's not just important to us. This is also important to Microsoft. So I would like to actually welcome a video message from uh, from the VP of Technical Evangelism in Microsoft. Let's let's hear what Derek Derek Burney has to say about. It. Hello, my name is Derek Burney, and I'm the general manager of the Technical Evangelism division here at Microsoft. I'd like to welcome you to ZertoCon 2017. Zerto is a key component of our customers' journey into the public cloud and the integration of Azure into their corporate IT strategy. Azure itself is generally available in 34 regions around the world, with plans announced for an additional four. We place a high priority on geographic expansion to enable better performance and also to support your data location requirements and preferences. Disaster recovery in the public cloud is a critical service with immediate ROI for many of our customers. Every Zerto public cloud DR environment can also serve as a testbed for permanent cloud deployments. 
Today, Zerto has completed their public cloud DR vision with full support of failover and failback functionality, which makes the hybrid cloud promise a reality for all Azure customers. Microsoft is committed to our partnership with Zerto, and together we'll continue to innovate in this space. I hope you enjoy the show. So here with us we have uh, Dominic. Uh, Dominic is the director of uh, global cloud team in Microsoft, and actually Dom has a, a, an interesting story in regards to uh, how he came to Microsoft one day before. So Dom. Maybe introduce yourself. Yeah, my, my name is Dominic Anschutz. I'm one of the directors in the One Commercial Partner Team in Microsoft. And actually, my journey with Zerto actually started over six years ago. I actually was a customer and a cloud service provider uh, utilizing the Zerto product in the early days. And even then, it was such a great product that I grew my entire business on that. In fact, one of my customers is here. One of my very first customers is here. And that business grew and grew and was so successful that I then got headhunted by Microsoft to go work for them and then brought Zerto with me into Microsoft. So actually, it's your fault I'm in Microsoft today. Um, but one of the things that struck me when I saw that video a little bit earlier was about revolution. And I actually would drop the R and say it's an evolution. Zerto has evolved and is continuing to evolve. And I see it as one of the market leading business continuity products on the market today. And my journey with it will continue, but fantastic journey and a great product. So from, you know, now you're sitting in the, uh, in the, from the Azure point of view of the world. First of all, how do you see the growth of uh, uh, disaster recovery as, as, as a stepping stone into cloud? And how do you see the whole hybrid cloud forming, resiliency, all the topics we discussed from a big Azure point of view of the world? That's interesting, actually. And you know, Microsoft's whole mantra now, under the leadership of Satya, it's also evolving. And it is a hybrid cloud model that we're looking at. And very much, when I look at Zerto and its capability for not only protecting your assets, but also, in some cases, migrating assets. And that product that is now can do bi-directional, SVR is, is, is incredible from that perspective. But it also plays directly into what Microsoft is doing, the pure hybrid cloud and actually Zerto supports that. If you think about it, one third of our VMs actually are Linux based, um, and Zerto supports all of the hypervisors that we see today that we actually can absorb. So truly a great pairing of technologies. And in terms of the, uh, the disaster recovery uh, piece as, as kind of like what you see from customers coming in, in terms of like, are they looking at disaster recovery as a way to test the cloud, as Derek said, or is it gonna be an ongoing thing? Um, in some cases, I see business continuity as being one of the early uh, services that are actually utilized to test public cloud or some of the private clouds that when I started. Um, so we do see people using Zerto to do that first workload into the public cloud because they see the DR, it's, it's, no one wants to run a second data center. No one wants to uh, carry all that hardware and look after it. So the public cloud is an ideal location to actually start putting that because you're only gonna pay for the controller and the storage. And then it's only when you spin up those resources do you actually start paying for them. So as Derek was saying, we're now going up to 38 different uh, geographies. In fact, if you look at that combination of utilizing Express Route and Microsoft Azure, that's the ideal combination with Zerto to take your workloads, those first initial workloads, through to Azure, even if it's for DR or if it's going to be certain uh, smaller workloads that you're willing to take into the public cloud. But that combination is, is fantastic. And any last words about the relationship between Zerto and Microsoft, and how do you see this forming in the, in the future, and maybe guidance for customers that are looking to do something together? It's a good question, actually. And what you'll see at WPC Inspire coming up uh, for Microsoft, you'll see that Satya is changing that organization. Again, evolving that organization. It's a mobile-first, cloud-first organization now that is driven by its partners. So we're committed to our partner Zerto and to other partners to make them successful and help drive the public cloud and actually help people to move to the cloud. I think that relationship that we have, that special relationship that we have, um, is fantastic. I mean, we even dress the same, I've got to say. <laughs> Almost, yeah. Almost. Um, but, it, but it is a really great relationship that we have today with Zerto. And we'll continue to grow and evolve from both a technical standpoint and from a co-sell standpoint. And I'm look for, looking forward to the next couple of years because 
Zerto is definitely going places. And everyone who's chosen Zerto, you've chosen the right technology. So thank you for uh, the, the sponsorship here. And thank you for the relationship. And thank you, Dominic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Gil. You'll be seeing a lot of Gil. You have to get used to that. <laughs> but uh, I, I want to introduce him every time. So really, this is exciting. And, and we like this new initiative with Microsoft. And if any of you want to see a demo of this Azure bidirectional replication, well, you came to the right place. Uh, I'm not going to play one now. I'm not smart enough to actually do that. But if you go to the Z Connect space uh, during the show, you can actually see a, de a demo of this bidirectional replication. Now, obviously, we've got a lot of very interesting product announcements that we are making during the, this show. But there is a, a product keynote. Our vice president of products, uh, Rob Streche, is coming on tomorrow at 9 AM. So I'm not going to steal any more of his announcements. But uh, if you want to hear them, then same place tomorrow at 9 AM, take a front row seat. And a lot of very exciting uh, stuff going on there. So at this point, I would like to welcome our president, responsible for worldwide sales, Paul Zeider. Thank you, Z. Good morning, everybody. It's really exciting to see that we've had our heads down over the last year, last six years, but really this last year since the last ZerdoCon, uh, really driving our vision and our agenda. And as part of that journey that we've been taking and, and building out our, our ecosystem, uh, you, you tend to have your head down and you're running fast. And then uh, before you know it, our second annual ZerdoCon is upon us. And it's a, it's a great opportunity to really see the, the fruit of the efforts coming together, to see the folks in the room here, our customers and our partners that are here enjoying the journey with us, sharing with us, our, our customers in particular. I really want to thank you for your business. I want to thank you for trusting in Zerto and understanding that, that we could solve some of the pain points that you have around your business continuity and disaster recovery. But as importantly, if not more importantly, understanding how we can play in this world of digital transformation and IT resiliency and cloud. Uh, how, how does this all come together? So I'm really excited that we have the energy and the momentum of all the folks in the room here. And I really thank you for making the effort to come here and spend time with us. And hopefully these next few days you'll find to be very beneficial in return. From the early days of quantum, or excuse me, whoo, from the early days of Zerto, uh, I've got a long history in this business, but this is my favorite one. Uh, from, from, the, uh, from the early days at Zerto, the company was founded on customers. So even when Ziva and Oded were coming up with the technology and trying to think what was missing in the marketplace, the very first thing they went was started talking to customers and really understanding what customers need. And the customers have been foundational. In fact, they're not only foundational, they're one of our key core values in the company. Customer first is in every wall of Zerto, in every one of our locations. And it may be obvious that, that customers should come first, but I, I know as a, a consumer, I, I don't always feel that way. But, but that, that is key to what we do. And so customers really are central to everything we do. So we started out with the concept of how are we going to delight our customers, give them a unique experience that they may not have experienced in the past. And we knew to go do that, that we weren't going to be able to do it as a single entity. Uh, we, we like to think we're pretty good. But we know that it takes a village to go really make a difference. And in the words of uh, Dominic, really get an evolution going in the industry. And so the first thing that we did very early on also, after we started talking to customers and we got a product developed, was to go out and start to build our partner ecosystem. Partner ecosystem is critically important because our partners are the ones that are touching the customers every single day. And they're working on a very broad sense in terms of what solutions are necessary to ensure that our customers are having their voices heard, understanding what the pain points are, and how those pain points are going to get solved. I mean, the stuff that we're talking about here is complex stuff. 
Now we're talking about simplification, right? We're gonna simplify, 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 uh, make your lives easier, and, it, and, and that will happen, but it's very difficult to just jump there. You know, popping into the cloud sounds great. Um, all of you in the room here know that it is not that easy. It takes a lot of work. So the channel partners have been critical. Our cloud partners that came on board about six months after we got started, we released our cloud solution. And our cloud partners have been absolutely critical to our success as well. They've really helped us evolve as a company, help us realize what is required at scale to really play in the space and play effectively. And the, the, the missing piece, if you will, that we knew we wanted to get to, but it takes time as you're building the company and adding resources, was the technology alliances component. And that's a critically important component because you can't have a complete solution if you don't have the support of the alliance partners. So when we took all this together and surround the customer with it, it becomes a very compelling way to address digital transformation and IT resiliency. And we were recognized for this pretty powerfully recognized. In the few short years that we've been in this space, if you look at Gartner and you look at the magic quadrant for Draz, you'll see that we are powering over 50% of those that are in the magic quadrant in the space, over 50%. Some of those folks like Island and Peak 10 and Tierpoint, Blue Lock, these are, these, some of these partners have been with us almost from day one when we got into the cloud space and have been critical components to helping us mature in the cloud space. And mature to such a point that now, if you look in the far right hand, the leader in that space, IBM, is now a very critical and important partner of us. And they're not only a partner, they're a sponsor here, and there are a number of folks in the room here from IBM. This is important because it talks about how a solution in the marketplace is really resonating at some of the largest players out in the market that have been in the market for quite a while with a lot of technology of their own that they've invented. So it talks to what we're able to accomplish here. If you take a look at the, the magic wave that Forrester publishes, this is even more compelling. 90%, nine out of 10 in that space are powered by Zerto. Nine out of 10. And the one that's way up in the corner there, you're not the quickest bunny in the forest, but I can assure you that we're working with them as well. In, in, in you know, next year when we're all sitting here and the room will be larger, I expect to have that last dot filled in as well. Powerful. Powerful solution in the right hands with the right people that are able to deliver on the vision that we have as a company. And I'd like to welcome to stage here a couple of our partners that are in the cloud service provider space to share some of their thoughts with you. Gil? So, hi, welcome. We have John and William. Let's start with introducing yourselves, William. Yeah, my name is uh, William Toll, and I run product management at Navisite, a Spectrum Enterprise company. And I'm John White. I'm the VP of Product Strategy for Expedient. So let's start with uh, understanding about, about your business and your relationship with Zerto. Sure, we've been a Zerto partner for a few years now, and as a managed multi-cloud provider, we're uh, finding that certainly disaster recovery is that stepping stone to the public cloud that many of our clients uh, start with. But it's the innovation that surrounds Zerto that gets all of our engineers excited as well as our customers excited. We, uh, we've done a lot of unique things that uh, take Zerto beyond just disaster recovery. And I like the first slide we saw before that uh, resiliency means change, right? And Change means change in security, change in performance, uh, and change in requirements, right? IT is moving so quickly now that a solution like Zerto and Any2Any -Any enables our clients to run performance tests against their production environments, or a replication of their production environments, run security and pen tests against uh, those environments. We, we launched a service called Proving Ground that brings all that to light. Uh, and 
Our customers benefit by having uh, access to the limitless infrastructure of a VMware cloud or Microsoft Azure, and then can do all sorts of things with production environments. So, do you want to mention uh, about, the, about the scale of Navisite? What type of customers you guys uh, uh, see? Sure. Uh, Navisite primarily serves the mid market and the smaller enterprise. And as a part of Spectrum Enterprise, uh, we have clients and uh, networks all across the country that really bring it all together in a way that um, only the cloud and network together brings it all home. So on the same, a little bit about Expedient, uh, your scale, what type of customers, and your relationship with Zero? Yeah, Expedient is a privately held, debt-free company with uh, 11 data centers, soon to be 12. Uh, we're operating in seven markets. So we actually have a data center here in Boston, down in Baltimore, Cleveland, Ohio, Columbus, Indianapolis, Memphis, and uh, our headquarters in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. All of those data centers are actually interconnected with 10 gig fiber. So we have a pretty awesome platform for customers that want to be in multiple data centers. And actually, the majority of the customers that we handle want to be in multiple data centers. So about 75% of our new customers in 2016 leverage two or more of our data centers. So they're doing disaster recovery with us. They're putting backups in another third data center to make sure that their data is spread out to make sure they have that resiliency. Uh, like Navisite, we focus on the mid-market customer, uh, small enterprise. And we do a lot, with different, a lot of different things with disaster recovery. But one thing that makes us a little bit unique is the package that we actually built with Zerto uh, that we call Push Button DR. We feel that there's really three main things that you need to have for this cloud evolution that we're going into. And you need to have a platform for the network to operate on. So either something like a private 10 gig, or we actually utilize NSX to interconnect multiple customer sites into our data centers. We need to have some sort of hypervisor platform or container platform to then operate the data. And then you need a data mover like Zerto to actually wrap it all up and put it together. And what this will start to do is really start to transform how you think about disaster recovery and get away from disaster recovery thinking it's maybe a bad thing and you have all your eggs in one basket, you're moving it to the next, to more about application assurance and IT resiliency. And that's really what our customers want as they're growing at such a rapid rate, they don't want to have to worry about where their data is, where their data is living, they just want to make sure it's up and running all the time. We heard uh, Ziv saying before, and we all know that, that the, the cloud is, is happening for everybody, but it's also very confusing for, for many. And many of our customers, which I talk to, or we as a company talk to, they know they need the cloud strategy, but they don't know what their cloud strategy is. You guys have very uh, good insight on that because you know, you're part of that uh, quest that these customers are doing and figuring out what is our cloud strategy. What do you see in different companies as cloud strategies? Yeah, I think um, many companies are beyond, are we going to move to the cloud? It's now, when are we going to move? But how do we move there? What do we move first? What applications move first? What are the dependencies among those applications? What are the resiliency needs, right? And a solution like Zerto knocks down the, the concerns and uh, worries about resiliency and uh, opens that door to many legacy apps um, that can run successfully in the cloud, uh, as well as take advantage of multiple data centers in the cloud. Um, we have a team of solution architects that work hand in hand with our salespeople and, and business development people that go in and spend a good quality amount of time with our clients and our prospects to get them over that hurdle. And Zerto and the ease of use of Zerto, the familiarity, the integration with uh, VMware is second to none. And um, you know, it's a testament to the number of people that are here today, um, just how successful Zerto has become uh, as that first stepping stone. Great, what do you see as a cloud strategy? Yeah, we actually use Zerto as a major data mover and an on-ramp into the cloud. So we've been offering private and public cloud now since 2007. So we'll do the public cloud obviously in our data centers, private cloud, at our customer premises or inside of our data centers. And we actually use Zerto as that first step to kind of get them into you know, what it will look like to start working with us. So we actually migrate customers that way. And uh, we probably moved a few thousand VMs last year using Zerto, bringing them in. We actually even had one customer publicly say in one of the tickets that it was like magic to move it in, which is a great thing to say. 
Um, and we use that you know, as the kind of the first step to kind of get them going into the cloud. So we, we view Zerto as kind of that, that, that toe in the water for them. And when you look at the DR as a service space, you know, right now it's growing so rapidly. I mean, you're seeing 30, 40% uh, compound annual growth rate, and we're seeing that too. So the, the market's definitely listening. Last year we had 2x growth rate in our DR as a service business, which is fantastic. So people are enabling and using DR as a service to start that cloud strategy as they realize that's the only path forward. They know they need to be in multi-cloud. They know they need to get out of you know, owning their own hardware, owning their own data centers. This is a nice path forward for them. One thing we hear from uh, our customers, we actually even heard it uh, yesterday in our customer advisory board here, is you know, the fear from the public cloud in the sense that, you know, who do I call if I have a problem? I think you guys, as, as more of a, a managed cloud providers, offer a different perspective than that. Do you want to share your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the key, right? As a service provider, we've seen it all, right? We have clients that are running legacy applications, that are running cloud-native applications, that um, you know, experience all sorts of performance requirements and uh, compliance uh, requirements. And we have over uh, 600 certifications in the company, um, over 300 on Microsoft uh, technologies alone. And it's that level of expertise that a service provider has that certainly makes it a more comfortable journey to the cloud, uh, a more confident journey. Um, you know, let's face it, uh, even here in Boston, where uh, our headquarters is, um, we just can't hire enough engineers. Um, there just are not enough engineers across the US and around the world that can fulfill the needs of uh, security requirements or performance tuning. And uh, as a managed cloud service provider, that's exactly the, the need we fill. Yes, yeah, so service is obviously a pretty big thing um, for us. And we use it as a differentiator and uh, we actually use it as a way to get people a little bit more comfortable with kind of their IT vision in the future. If you think about it, a lot of these companies have been doing the same thing for 20, 30 years now. And it's hard to make that change. And support for us isn't just who you're gonna call once you're a customer, it's in the beginning. So we have solution architects that go out on site. They're very tenured people in the industry on the business side of things, on the technical side of things, that they help them guide them along that way. Our salespeople are the same way. We have a, a, a very, distinct direct sales team so that you're not getting somebody that's uh, not really been in the industry for a long time and just pushing paper. They actually know exactly how to define and create a solution for the customer. And it doesn't stop there. As we move them into when they sign with the customer, they get then in delivery side of things, you know, train people that have been in the industry, that work as project managers to kind of bring them in again, make them comfortable through the whole process. Finally, once everything's delivered, they get into the support, what we call it uh, white glove support. So we have 24 by seven support in all of our data centers, um, all W2 employees, so we don't outsource and contract anything, and they get to know the customer. We've built our own ticketing systems, and we've, we've hand-grown all of those things because they weren't around when we, we started being a service provider. So they're actually tailored to the customer. So the customers will actually give us feedback on the ticketing systems and say, hey, if you do this, you create this API, it'll make it a little bit easier. That's something that you're really not gonna get that high touch with a lot of the tier one cloud providers. It's like kind of dealing with your cable company. You know, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a phone call that's gonna be a little bit difficult to actually get anything done with. Any final uh, kind of like message to the audience from your side? No, I, I think uh, Zerto is that right partner. Um, it's a wonderful platform that is opening the door to the cloud to, to so many organizations. And uh, there's a, a great partner ecosystem that's forming. Um, tomorrow, our CTO and one of our great partners um, will be on the stage talking about uh, how one of our mutual clients really made that leap uh, to a DR solution that's cloud-based from physical and saw a tremendous cost savings, but also a lot more flexibility and resiliency across their apps. Glad to be here. Glad to see the ecosystem growing. Glad to see the room growing. It's pretty awesome. Um, glad I'm, I've been here for two, two of these. Uh, make sure you stop by our booth because you can become an instant IT superhero and we put it on Twitter. We had some of the executive team doing it yesterday. We got capes and all that fun stuff. So uh, definitely stop by. We'd love to keep the conversation going. Uh, we've been a Zerto customer now for about four or five years. We do it on Hyper-V and VMware. So we have a lot of good uh, experience and education we'd be happy to share with anybody. 
So yeah, I want to thank you two and all the rest of our cloud providers sponsoring these events. You have behind you in the uh, Z Connect space, many of our cloud provider uh, are actually present there with booths, so you can go and talk to them and understand the different offerings. Thank you very much, guys. Back to you, Paul. Thank you, John and William. So, I want to talk about uh, a number I like, 100%. It's not worth doing if you're not putting 100% effort in. And we feel the same way about how we approach the business with our channel and with our partners. So 100% to us represents the way that we're going to go to market today, the way we went to market five years ago, and the way we're going to be going to market in the future. Again, without our partners, we, we don't think that we can deliver the level of complexity and the solutions that, that you, our customers, need. Zerto is a great solution, great product, great technology, but it's not an endpoint product. It needs to be surrounded with professional services. It needs to be surrounded with other technologies to really deliver again on this IT transformation. So the commitment that we have from our partners in the room is that we will always remain 100% dedicated to you. And what's important from our customers is to know that that dedication is going to deliver the level of services that you're looking for and the other technologies and the solution. The number of partners that we have on both the reseller side and on our cloud service providers has grown pretty significantly. So the number has grown from you know, single digit numbers early on to 1,700. And we think that 1,700, while you know, this won't be an end game number for us, our focus now is not to turn the 1,700 into 64,000 partners and resellers, because we want to take the partners and resellers that are out around the globe that know how to deliver what we're trying to accomplish here. And those that are in the room here and those that couldn't make it, that, that make up some of the 1,700 around the world are those that understand that the days of you know, moving iron is gone. You, you've got to transform what you can provide as solutions and that's what the partners in the room here have already made that move. They're pivoting and we're helping and working with them to go drive that and make sure they're, they're successful. So how do we do that? Well, we don't want to only be an innovator when it comes to the technology that we're bringing to the marketplace. We want to be an innovator in every piece of the business and every way we touch the market and touch the customers. So we put a lot of effort into the Zerto Alliance program, or ZAP. We not only have an alliance program for our partners, we also have it for our technology alliance partners. And there's, there's aspects around it about how we tier our partners from a platinum and a gold and a silver uh, what's critically important for our partners in terms of where they fit in that is the level of commitment that both our companies make together to help grow the business. And these investments come in a lot of different forms and you'll see that the investments that we're making here are all around enablement, enabling you to deliver the solutions that customers are looking for with Zerto at the core. We want to continue to enable from a professional services standpoint. Again, the, the complexity of what we're trying to accomplish here is tough, but it's doable. And so we want to make sure that we are getting better and better at the professional services side to enable our partners to deliver a world-class solution and experience to our customers. So you'll see continued investments there, and we're going to be talking about it at different points throughout the show in more detail. The other thing that we're doing is we're surrounding our partners with much more, not only resources in terms of tools, but people. We've put a lot of effort and time into investing in people around the globe that are specifically focused on our partners. So these are, are on the channel side, on our cloud service providers. In terms of percentage growth, it far outweighs the, uh, the 50, 60% head growth that Z was talking about in this space, in fairness, because we were a little bit behind in these, some of these investments, we're now investing in triple digit percentages to ensure that we have the right people. Our service engineers, our uh, service engineering support engineers, uh, our field marketing 
folks that are able to work with all of our partners in the room here with the key of getting the message out so that customers understand who Zerto is. We're, we're, we're becoming you know, larger and larger on the map and, and the recognition is getting there, but I'm always frustrated when I talk to a customer that just bought something else because they didn't know that Zerto was a potential solution. So we, of course, want to get ahead of that and always have the right solution. So, we talk about the partners, our channel partners, our cloud service providers. The other big differentiator and key that we were talking about is how do we continue to build out the ecosystem so that our customers can run, protect, move their businesses, their applications, their data, where they want to put it. It's no longer just an on-prem game, as we all know. It's no longer just a, you know, do I put a toe in the water? Do I do, I do some with a colo or a managed service provider? Public cloud is here in a big way. And we're, as you hear today, super excited with what we've been able to accomplish with Microsoft as a partner to really build out our ecosystem in the public cloud space. Hugely powerful. This, of course, comes right on the heels of the release that we did that really starts to enable the use cases for our customers in the room here and our partners around, can I take advantage of this true hybrid cloud model? Well, yes, now with our 5.0 release that allowed this concept of one to many to give customers this opportunity to have either you know, copies on-prem but now have that tertiary copy up in a public cloud or with our managed service providers that have that copy that want a tertiary copy. So the use cases and the, the ability now to truly move into the cloud, and as Zeev talked about with the release that's coming this summer, the ability to now start to move back out of the cloud as well is, is really differentiated. It didn't exist, it doesn't exist with the level of IT resilience, the RPOs and RTOs that we talk about, it doesn't exist today in a consumable way. This is the first time that it's gonna exist. So very excited about those opportunities. You also are hearing about IBM and Hewlett Packard, HPE. And th these are also very exciting partners of ours on a number of different levels. As I talked about a little bit before, I mean, these are industry titans that have been around a long time that know the IT business inside and out, foundational in this business from the early days, and their transitional visionary companies that are moving very quickly, understanding what the requirements are. I mean, you saw where IBM was on the Magic Quadrant. They get it. The fact that Zerto now is a solution within both of these companies' portfolios, and these, of course, are both companies that, that are very heavy channel-oriented companies as well, it creates a much broader solution. And it creates some very important validation points. Again, as we start to spread that message globally, and reach out to the customer base that we know we can go after. And then lastly, and uh, most of these folks are here today, the pure storages, the Nutanix, uh, these are, are technologies that you're all familiar with in the room. These are also disruptors. They were game changers that came in that were able to have an idea and move faster than the big guys and start to lead the market. Critically important that they're part of our ecosystem as well. And we both play a very, collaborative uh, solution and effort to come together to, again, bring differentiated solutions out to our customers and out to the market. Because that's what the market demands and that's what the market needs in order to accelerate this cloud adoption and do it with the concept of IT resiliency. So if you take this in its entirety, you take the channel partners, which I believe we have some of the best partners that you can have out in the world, and again, the channel partners, I want to drive home that we are, we, are, we, we are with the best in the industry, in my opinion, the best in terms of their vision of where they want to take the business and, and understanding where customers need to go and leading them on that journey. The best in terms of the, the focus and the investments that they make in us as well as what we're making in them in terms of getting their people ramped up and understanding how to deliver the solution to the customers and what to look for. On the cloud service provider side, you know, this has been from day one a critical, very important part of our ecosystem. Our service providers have delivered 
60 straight months from day one when we first started shipping the space, 60 straight months of growth. And that growth is important from a perspective that it shows not only the adoption of the cloud in terms of the opportunity with DRAS, which is critically important, but also shows the, the velocity of opportunity that's coming in, and not only coming in, but it stays in the cloud. So while we talk about this mobility in and out of the cloud, it's important, but the reality is, in most cases, these customers are making a journey in, and they're in all likelihood going to stay there. And of course, it's, it's, we got to continue to delight them with the experience that they have once they're in the cloud. But if they're in, they're going to experience a very positive experience relative to what they had in trying to run their own IT organizations, very powerful. So when you take the cloud service providers that we've had a very long and healthy relationship together with our channel partners, and by the way, these channel partners and cloud providers, you know, there, were, there was a time early on that maybe you know, that's, they're, 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 there's competition, can't work together. Well, the reason that we have everybody in the room here together is because there's a huge interdependency. And again, we have the smart resellers in the room that understand I, I, I have to partner with, my, with the cloud service providers so I can deliver what my customers want to consume. And there's, there's plenty of business to be had there, again, because of the complexity. And you're going to be able to have a very healthy business based on much more exciting elements of the business around delivering true value to customers versus the old game of sling and iron around based on relationships. And then again, the last piece is the technical, technical alliances piece. So as we now pull the technical alliances piece together, you can see how we've created and are delivering on our vision of really taking an ecosystem, building it out, and in fairness, we, we still have a lot of work to do, and we're gonna be working very hard as, as we leave this week. I can assure you it's heads down again, and we're running fast, but we believe that with the village that's been created here, this ecosystem, powered by Zerto, the future's a bright one. And I wanna thank all the partners and the customers in the room here, and Zeev, what do you think about uh, how we can take this to the next level? So I like what we can do with that next. And we talked about, we talked about and really appreciate everyone listening on IT resiliency, on how we are on a journey. We are on a journey together to build a resilient IT infrastructure. We have more requirements, more options. This is getting complex, but we have the options. We have private clouds, we have managed clouds, we have public clouds, and of course the hybrid clouds. We need to be able to take all our workloads there. We need to know how to protect them, how to manage them, how to move them, and in some cases, how to recover them. And if we know how to do that, we can build the next generation of resilient IT. And this is where Zerto is doing. This is what we are committed to doing. And this is what we will continue to connect the dots on this journey. So we're going to have a very exciting couple of days here. We are going to hear presentations from a General Hayden, that is a four-star general, former director of the NSA and the CIA, and that's going to be very exciting this afternoon. We have a panel, three of the leading uh, analysts in the industry, Gartner, Forrester, and 451. They will discuss uh, with you what they're seeing in this space. We have our product keynote by Rob, Rob Strechai from Zerto tomorrow, our VP of product. That's going to be tomorrow morning. It's going to be very interesting. We have something that we're doing for the first time. It's a desk match. This is a live scripting challenge over Zerto. So a lot of the really talented people here are going to be competed, competing on who will be the best person to do the scripting. We have a great party tonight. I do expect to see everyone here. We are going to have fun. And most important, we have a lot of sessions a lot of sessions, a lot of people, sessions, panels, very interesting information, very exciting information, very useful information. So thank you all for, uh, for listening. I would like to end with a message. We are talking about the evolution of IT, so I actually said I'll steal a quote from probably the number one expert of evolution, Charles Darwin. And when he was exploring, he actually mentioned 
that one of the things he noted is that it is not the strongest of species that survive. That's good, otherwise as humans we would not be here. It is also not the most intelligent, but it is the ones that are most responsive to change. If we want to build the next generation of IT, we need to know how to respond to change to survive. Thank you all. Welcome to ZerdoCon. Enjoy the show.